playing trade guitars is giving away this Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul to one of you. How to enter? Subscribe to Playing Trade Guitars on YouTube and we'll give it away when we hit 50,000 subscribers. So hey guys, this is Cesar from Play and Toy Guitars. If you like this video, please hit the button there, subscribe. Take care. Alright. Let's look. You wanna take a look? I can't wait. Yeah, I've never seen a guitar be built in my life. We can go this way. <laughs> You want to do a quick stop here with this guy. Oh, hey, thanks. What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> this guy, this, when you talk about art, it doesn't get any more artistic than what he does. This, this all carved by hand. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is your name, sir? Pardon me? What is your name? Rick Henrik. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Good to meet you. That's fantastic. And Rick does. Thank you. He does all every single thing by hand. Oh I mean, these these literally are his tools. Yeah. All these oh different chisels. I mean, how many of, how many of these can you put out in a year? Oh, depends on how hard saves our food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, it depends, maybe. Six, eight, ten. Depend. It kind of depends. But yeah, yeah. But I mean, how probably much not more than ten. Huh? Yeah, oh no. Probably. probably wow. No. Yeah. Wow. And actually, we did. We. I say we. He did. <laughs> Rick did a really special one for Adam. Um, it was a project that I, I showed him a little piece of artwork. Yeah. And the next thing you know, he was carving. <laughs> and that's a one of one carved that you can imagine more or less what would be the the artwork on yeah. it on the top, which is a one of one that Adam has now. Oh my goodness. I wanna have him send me a picture. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. bug him for a picture. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Adam, send me a picture of that, will you? Yeah. Never but come on through, I'm gonna show him okay. around. Thank you so much. But it's a... Uh, but it's a... Uh, So I'm gonna we're gonna start on the on the basically what I call the wood library. Okay. So we're gonna go on the back. By the way, this is uh, Tom Murphy. How you doing, Tom? And don't don't get him to start talking. <laughs> we'll buy we'll buy you a beer later. This, this is where we, where it starts, where we receive the, the wood. And, oh, that um, smell. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Let me see if I can uh, bring to show you. Look at that piece of top there. Holy cow. Let's see. This is where we basically receive everything, all the types of woods, and then clearly then we join the maple with the mahogany, and yeah. then this keeps going. We cut, we have a rough mill where we already cut these and they come in this way, and um, which is right outside. Yeah. And then we start here from here onwards with mahogany, maple, koa, Quilted maple, 
and uh, and now we're we're building Corina again. Yes. That will start getting released later in the year. That's really exciting. I, I love think Corina. I might have might have a couple of bees out there uh, running running through the factory that I'll show you if I find. I would love to. How long does this from the time the tree falls down until it gets to this stage? How long does the wood have to cure or dry or? It's about 30 to 60 days. Okay. So the moisture content has to go down to under 10 percent. Under 10 percent. Okay. Before it can it can start going into production. Is that a kiln process that dries it? Yeah. Once we get it, it's much faster. Okay. Yeah. We can dry it or we can humidify it depending on what it needs. Oh, okay. In our in our kilns in the rough mill. What, what's the main source of uh, the woods these days? It's all around the world. Yeah. It's the eastern maple from the United States and Canada, tone woods from India, from Central America, mahogany from Fiji and other sources as well in the U.S. Um, we're now starting to bring African limba back in yeah. from Africa. Um, so, so you're having to experiment with a lot more woods because of scarcity too in terms of the whole guitar industry? Is that a change that's here we, to stay? We have, we have uh, great relationships with our suppliers and we are their largest customer. Yeah. So they also, pri thankfully, we, they, we get prioritized. So, Good. But we've been a customer for, in some cases, over 30 years with our suppliers. Yeah. So we have long-term relationships and long-term agreements for sourcing of the wood. Good. Good. Excellent. So. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. Unreal, man. I'm going to show you some stuff in maybe no particular order, but... Yeah. What we do here is there's a first there's a first cut where we where the the it would it would take a very long time for us to do this manually so we we have these machines that do a first sort of shaving of the wood mm -hmm. and make it a part that we can now then by hand start making a guitar otherwise yeah. it would just take too long to get to the stage where we can actually start manipulating it by hand so okay. we use we always like the machines help us make uh, parts, mm -hmm. and then our craftsmen and women here make guitars. That's where it all really happens by yeah. hand. Yeah. But yeah, so here's this in, the, in this area where you can see we're getting the necks ready. Yeah. And in this case, we've got the ears being glued. Okay. And so once the ears get glued, then we go to that step. Okay. And then in this in this section here. You know, we receive the, the pieces of neck, we cut them, we put the truss rod in, and, uh, and then start the process of shaving it down so that it can become a, an actual piece of that and it becomes a guitar part. Sure. You know, here we, we're... Uh, here you have an example of something that it's already been cut, in this case maple, and uh, the truss rod is in and the filler is in. Uh, okay, yeah. And so, you know, the truss rod goes in and then the filler goes in. And the truss rod is actually a Gibson invention. We invented that in 1921. Wow. I did not know that. And then you, you see all the different tone woods that we have here that are ready to, to oh, then cool is that? Meet, meet their neck. <laughs> How is the supply of ebony? That's good. We have good, no yeah. we have no issues with ebony. Good. So the 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 raw tone wood comes in. Obviously, then it gets slotted. Yeah. And uh, here's where we do the fretting with a fret wire. This happens all here. We 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 fret the fingerboards. And. Um, and then we put the inlays in and we put the dots in. In this okay. case, this this station is to put the dots in. Oh, okay. Which oh, they, they will all go in by hand and will get cut. Wow. And is this what, does this actually push the frets in? Yeah, so once the, the frets are in, this machine presses them down. Yeah, okay. 
So this is still all done, I you know, that here. It's not all automated. This is all by hand. It's all by hand. I love it. Like, can I can I hold it? Can I just pick one up to see what it's like? Yeah. What? Oh, so great. Yes. <laughs> It's like uh This is Corina. Beautiful. Corina V. Or v. Yep. I, I, I saw some, if they didn't take them and start working on them, I saw some there uh, on the other side, I'll show you. Beautiful. What's this guy here? This is doing a... See how it shaves the first cut? Oh yeah. So it does that and, and, it, and it starts shaving the neck joint. Mm -hmm. And then the finishing on the actual neck is all done by hand. So. Every person here that is that is actually rolling necks knows the specs of each one of the guitars and has to feel it. Wow. So once it comes out of here, it starts getting rolled by hand. Wow. So really every, I mean, it, it is true then that every guitar has its own kind of one-off character in yeah. the neck. Yeah, correct. Uh, let's go to the other side. Go here. It may, it may seem like an obvious statement, but I think a lot of newer players don't understand that things are still made this way. You yeah. Know, this much attention to hand details. Actually, we should have gone the other way, but come in. Okay. You can come around if you want. Say whatever is usual. How are you doing? So what, what's going on here is we're putting the the headstock veneers in. Yeah. Uh, they're they're getting glued here. Same same principle that what we use with the fingerboards. You know the fingerboards get glued in and then they'll rest there for a while. Yeah. Um, in this case the fingerboards are in already. What type of glue is used in this process? It's hide glue. Hide glue. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that it basically disappears, yeah. melts in, mm -hmm. and it. There's, a, a, after it sort of curates, and it doesn't take that long, you know, within a couple of days, it'll be basically just a, uh, a single piece. Mm -hmm. And that's important because as, as the whole guitar becomes a single piece, including the neck joint, when it joins the body, it's just the whole thing is the tuning for it. There are no bolts, there's nothing interfering sound. Other, other companies use different types of glue that actually become a plastic in the middle. Okay. And when they become a plastic in the middle, it starts interrupting, you know, sound transfer. So that resonance is straight through with the high Straight glue. through. The whole wow. guitar is resonating as a tuning fork. So, yeah. yeah. Take those. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Let's go around here. Is that for us? Yeah. No way. What? You see that these are the truss rods we use. So a Gibson, the Gibson patent going back to 1921. Is that what you said? 30. 30 it's months? a Gibson invention, yeah. So it'll it'll get slotted here like that. Oh my goodness. And that's and that allowed the necks to get smaller before. Yeah. Before the truss rods, the necks were very big because you know to avoid movement. Sure. And once we came up with this. And you can go smaller on the neck. Mm -hmm. Now you got way more yeah. accessibility on the fretboard. And then if it moves, you can adjust it. That's another thing that we had some of these machines start making is, you know, the holes on the pickup ring for the pickups, uh, the, the control cavities. You know, in the past, we had people doing that actually by hand. It's super dangerous, you know. It's, 
you can get you know accidents constantly. Wow. So since that that is uh, something that and the first carve as well, and then and then we start belt sanding. So these are things that the machines have helped us accelerate the time frame, and yeah. then we go into handmade. Yeah. This is what it feels like wow. coming out of there, and then it starts getting sanded by hand. Wow. Sanded by hand once it's after this stage. So that machine does the routing for like the. Yeah, that. That's got there so that we don't have any, any fingers or hands on pin routers. Right, yeah. And this, see the long tenant. Yeah. These are all going to be 60s, uh -huh. R60s. So there's a lot of talk about this. For people that don't know, the long neck tenon leads to more resonance and has more of a connection to the body. Is that right? This is an R9 lefty. Yeah. Um, the, the longer tenon, it's just a matter of preference. Yeah. I don't, you know, it, does it it's make It's one of those things that people latch onto, you know? You see people talking about all the long neck tenon. The, the reason we make them this way is just because it's a replica of, of how we made them in back in, the, in this case in 1959. Yeah. And the reason we made them longer back in the day is because they thought we needed that type of, um, you know, this size yeah. to be attached to prevent issues with the neck. Yeah. Then we realized that that's not necessarily true. We okay. can shorten that and um, and so at Gibson USA, we use the shorter tenon yeah. in the custom shop. If we're making a, in this case, a 59 reissue, yeah. it'll have the right, you know, the tenon from 1959. Yeah. Gorgeous. There's so many things that go into the sound yeah. that that might contribute to it, but ultimately this is, this is very lightweight mahogany. Yeah which is incredibly resonant. Yeah. This is Eastern Maple, yeah. which is very resonant as well, and yeah. it has a lot of sustain. So all that, the neck, the joint, yeah. everything, the high glue. That's always kind of my tone. point. I mean, it seems silly when you see what goes into the guitar at each stage to get hung up on one aspect, to see the craft and the artistry that goes into the yeah. whole thing. It's the whole thing yeah, that makes it sound thing. the way it sounds, right. not one, right. one thing. So. Makes sense to me. Uh, this is where they'll they'll start manipulating by hand, and they'll they'll start shaving necks and carve tops, and binding goes on here. That's a real messy job, huh? This is what you get put on when you're late for work? Blue duty? Binding duty? And it has to be wrapped a certain way. Yeah. Yeah, in the case of a 335, it's got double binding, so it's got to go, it's got to dry, and then come back. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm stating the obvious, but I think people would be surprised to see that that's really how you glue everything together. I mean, it, it's... And then neck fit. Show you next bit. You know, once once the neck is ready, it's all ready to go. Then it'll find it'll meet the body. Mm -hmm. And, and so this I, was, is, I believe I was asking before: is the neck the neck is already predetermined to a body, or is there matching that's done? No, it's predetermined. Predetermined. So it's a, a less full custom with a custom body yeah. shaped like that. They will, they, will, they will become one here. Okay, okay. And so what happens here is he'll, he'll oh, start, yeah. sh they'll start shaving the necks down yeah. literally like this. And they'll, they'll figure out a little 
a little chips here and there that they need to chisel out. Yeah. And it'll meet the body and then it'll dry here for a couple of hours. Wow. Wow, so even this morning when we first came through, there was nothing here. And this is just in the time that we've been in the other again. room. Is there a rough number of guitars that get finished a day? In the, in the custom shops, around 70 a day. 70 a day? At Gibson USA, it's about 450. Okay, okay. So yeah, then once, then this is one of the most important parts of the process. They, that's why we do it all by clearly by hand, and they they'll chip away until it's a perfect fit with a perfect angle. Mm -hmm. So more more than just fitting it, they have to take out from the specific sections depending on how the wood is reacting okay. to make sure that the angle is perfect. Okay. Because the truss rod can adjust, but so much. Mm -hmm. The angle has to be perfect. So this is probably one of the most critical parts of the process, is neck fit. Can you explain a little bit how they folded in the ES style into Nashville? We brought that in after, uh, shortly after taking over. And we always made ESs here. Yeah. So the expertise was here and okay. then we, relocated our stuff okay okay and it's basically the split between the custom shop and gibson usa so all the historics are done here and then the the original and modern collections are done at gibson usa okay excellent and here's a i love trinis yeah a trini Talk about any more Dave Grohl models or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be really nice with the quilted maple. Wow. Oh my goodness. This is a custom order. Yeah. <laughs> So the ability to truly customize something is open to anybody who wants to, who has the budget to do it, basically. And then, um, I'm sure it depends, but what's the turnaround time for a purely custom order? Is it a year? Is it, I mean... Yeah, right now it's almost a year. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're working on shortening that. We've already made a lot of progress in shortening that. Mm -hmm. And the ideal is to, uh, Probably in the next 60 days, we'll get to, in the next 60 to 90 days, get to where the lead time is three months. Okay. And how much of the machining versus, like you said, all the hand finishing, when was that incorporated in? Is that a recent upgrade? No, it's Has been, that been done for years? Well, we've upgraded a lot of the equipment, but uh, it's been going on for the last you know, 10, 15 years. Okay. Where the, we got these CNC machines that help us cut yeah. down to parts, yeah. and then by hand, we may use that, those parts to make guitars. Yeah, it makes sense. That's so cool. So the guitar's been neck fit. Now it starts getting ready to go to finishing. Okay. So they start the, the, prepar the preparation process. Yeah. So that then it can start moving on to go to finishing, which okay. is where they get painted, really. Yeah. Uh, this is the final. This is, this is the final stage before the actual finishing at this point. So prepping it for finish. So this is the dye, which is the same dye that we used in the 50s. It's the red aniline dye. The aniline dye that's getting getting done to prepare it for for it to now start going into finishing. It's the same process we did back in the day. Actually, come over here. Before we enter this stage, they actually get plagued. Yes. How are you? So, on, man. And so every guitar that comes out of the factory gets plagued, where um, there's a... There's a scanning process. See, the laser is scanning right now. Oh, wow. It just went down. So what it does is it does six scans for the six strings over the frets, and then it, cre it creates a curve. Let me see if it's gonna go down now. This is relatively new in the past how many years? 
Yeah, this is also a last 10 years technology last 10 years, of, yeah. of like machines. So what it does is it's, it scans the entire Freud board, it does six times, yeah. and it creates the curve. You can actually get a true uh, indication of like the action and you know how much relief you can put on each guitar. Yeah. It'll tell us, uh, you can actually give it a good fall off radius as well. Wow. And down to the, I mean, what units are you working in when you're getting that kind of type of precision? We're, you were using um, inches by the yeah. inch scale. Yeah. So like a 20 thirds of an inch. So like you can you can see right here, it's telling us all the buzz values right That it here. broken down into a thousandths. Yeah. A thousandth of an inch, yeah. And so here you have where it's scanned on the red and then where it needs to go. And so then the machine wow. will start. This one is this one is shaving. See, wow. then once it created the curve, then it'll go fret by fret. And then and then lastly it'll it'll uh, cut the nut. And this is fret wire. Yeah. So there's all the shaved fret wire. It's all fret wire. Absolutely. Yeah, That's wow. <laughs> How long, you, how long have you been working at Custom? I've actually been working at Custom for going on 10 months now. Wow. And Jeff uh, Renko, he's actually the main guy. He's been here for over 20 years. Over here, we got to get like a free level of sleeve scan. Awesome. 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 Great to meet you, man. Nice seeing you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, man. Good to see you. Say bye. And then it also cut the nut. It'll shave it and cut it to where now we can keep going. And then, and then at the end, we'll, we'll shave it by hand. Wow. I'm just trying not be in the way. So here's where all the hand sanding happens. OK. This is hand sanding over here now. So these guys are. So you can see there, he's, he's now doing all the curves. I mean, let's go there. Yeah. But. Wow. That's, that's where it really happens. This is how it's done. Wow. Oh, wow. So what grid is that? There's all the different grades, see? Oh, so you keep going down. Or so up. this is this gonna, this is all hand sand. The neck wow. is hand sand. Feel that. He's, he's sanding the curves. Cool. No, but then it'll keep going. Yeah. It'll be buffed, it'll be all. And and each station will move, so like. What's up, man? How's keep, it going? Good, How keep going, keep you? going. We just oh, okay. show off. Show off, yeah, there you go. Show off. That's I know, I, I know about that kind of sandpaper from bowling. I grew up bowling. You, you actually sand and polish your bowling balls with different grit to get a different reaction. Yeah. So a, every guitar is is, hand, is sanded by hand. Yeah. And it's done by hand to the point where it becomes a guitar. Yeah. You know, again, the machines help us cut things down to make guitar parts. Right. But then all of our people are making guitars. Right. Right. Are and that, that allows us way more consistency in the parts also. Yeah. But we like the inconsistency of the hand. Yes. At, but at the stage where it really starts to matter, as opposed to the initial kind of grunt work of putting it down to approximately. Then it will it will be all start. really different, and yeah. Yeah. and then that that's more about character. Yeah. And the, than than really, you know, all less full customs are less full customs, but each one has character because of that. Now, do these guys kind of end up working in their own little kind of personal touch on what what to them makes a great neck, or does it just depend on what they're building? It depends on what they're building, and, yeah. they'll, and they'll know the specs of what needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. What's the what's the tops? Is it is it the R8s through R R nots, the R zeros that are the top sellers out of custom, or does it just vary depend? Based yeah. On all what all Les Paul as a shape is yeah. the best seller across yeah. Gibson and Epiphone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and uh, in the custom shop is the 59s. The 59. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of work into every piece, man. Crazy. Isn't that unbelievable. Right. So she's now preparing it. Tell them, you tell How them what you? you're doing. How are you? Yeah. You're on How camera you now. How y'all doing today? Woo, it's a bright light. Oh, yeah, it's right here. My what? job is when they 
She's getting it ready to uh, go into getting painted. Wow. Yeah, so that most likely will be a black custom. Okay. Yeah, I have different colors, like this one right here. So, so once I get done sanding it real wow. nice and pretty, it'll have a, a dark burst on it going all the way around. Wow. And then it goes dark as well, too. Oh, beautiful. It's called Venus Burst. Oh, beautiful. What was your name? Karen. Karen? Karen's a troublemaker. Oh, Karen's a troublemaker. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Thank you so much. She gets sent to the, to the principal's office, office yeah. every day. <laughs> you too. Thank you. And um, here in the troll maker, I like that. Yeah. So I mean, that's the kind of fit you're talking about, where. <laughs> He's neck fitting that one here. So he's fitting the neck here. I mean, you can see the level of hand craftsmanship. Amazing. Don't sit on that. I'm sure he's about to send that to all friends. This is unbelievable. Oh, Karina? Wow. Oh my goodness. Karina is, I really love Karina Wood. That's really exciting that you guys are doing a big run of these. These are the Karina Bees. Look at that. Can I peek at that? Top secret. Yeah, beautiful, uh, beautiful Karina. Top secret, huh? There's some more there. Ah. Murphy Lab. No peeking. Okay, I'll let you peek in. Ah, he's gonna let us peek in the Murphy Lab. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Get a good swipe. Can I stick my head in there? <laughs> That's the Murphy Lab. Thank you. Cesar, so for the aging sign version you did, who who did the aging of the guitars? Them? Yeah. That's yeah. how I figured. Wow. So when you do... When you do the video, edit that out. No problem. The Murphy Lab doesn't go in. No problem. All right, so here I can take like one camera and one because of the contamination. Okay. So you pick. You want, yeah, you want to go in since you got the ring? I can take you and you. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then you guys will see it. I just, we don't take anyone in there for the, con this is finishing. So any any contamination that goes in it, it'll it'll sure. make it into the guitars, and then we have to refinish. Sure, it. sure. So, okay. hop in. You guys can, you two come in the here. Yeah, come on here, and then and then I'll you'll come out when I take you guys over the other side. Okay. Come on in. Wow. Sure. Smell that, baby. And, and close the door. So this is where we, we're spraying, we're preparing, we're painting. Then the, the, everything gets lacquered on the other side. Yeah. 
that's why this is a very pristine area. And then to go to the other side, I'll show you. We're going to go through, through there. But um, so if you guys wait outside, I'm going to take them to show them about spray. Okay. <laughs> he said he's going to take us to show us the spray now. Wow. Like if that gets a little thing from our denim or something, it's done. Yes, and yes. We're going to have to redo it. Lacquering. He, he's lacquering now, but the, but before doing that, obviously they do the burst sprayings. The top on that one right Watch there is here. beautiful. Holy cow! Yeah. yeah. Wow. Amazing. Get a good shot of that. That oh, yeah. is so cool. Thank you for showing us that. You come here. Normally what we do with these is, let me see if I, it's disabled, but normally here what we do is to go to the other side. We go into this chamber, we get sprayed mm -hmm. so that we, you know, dust comes dust out of us, everything. then it's extracted, and then we open the next door and we go in. Okay. But come on in. What's up, man? How are you doing? Another great day. All good? Good number of spinnies. You tell them what you do. This is right here, build up. These are gonna go metallic colors here. Metallic colors? Yeah, these are all gonna be metallic and stuff here. So like, that's probably gonna be a silver burst. And then uh, these are gonna be gold pop. Wow. But uh, I QC the guitars in the morning before they get a lacquer on them. Make sure they're all great in each round. I make sure that the quality on them is still good. There's no contamination. And before they get sprayed with lacquer. Wow. That way, so when they get all eight coats, it looks beautiful. Wow. So he was saying you kind of come through here, they blow you with air, blow the dust off you, yeah, and then you work in a clean them. environment? They blow you off there. We leave this one open because it's got a draft, and it takes all the contamination okay. and kind of blows it out. Oh, OK. Kind of yeah. like a negative pressure thing. That... Yeah. And you can peek in here, they're drying. All in here. Wow. Oh man, did a good. <laughs> what a sight. These are the dryers. Can I peek through this window? Yeah. Wow. How long will it spend in there? It it takes a couple of days because they get eight eight coats of lacquer, so yeah. they go in and out, in and out. Okay. Man, I get a lot of that sparkle. Look at the sparkle on that Firebird. Oh my gosh. What? Is that a, is that a custom order? It's a one of one, yeah. Oh my gosh. We have, if you have a minute when we're done, we want to show you a 1990 Gibson custom Firebird that we have. Yeah. We brought with us. We're fans of the Firebird. Oh, you brought it? That will be a Silver Burst double neck. Silver Burst double neck? Yeah. <laughs> These are, these are all fresh, all fresh lacquer before buffing. Wow. And then buffing happens on the back. How you doing? This is pretty insane, what we do here. Painting? Um, here. So when we paint, look, see, she's doing it, but when we paint, the binding gets painted on top. Mm -hmm. We tried masking to see if we could um, make it easier. Yeah. We didn't just take it off, but it's just not, nothing ever works like that. So oh. we just paint on top, and then, and then these ladies go literally like by hand with a yeah. razor. To remove it, wow. 
and she starts she starts wow. spilling it off. How you doing? Oh, okay. No, you keep going. So he, she takes the paint off, and she has to go in perfectly. She goes in a fraction of a millimeter, off. it's a repair. Sure. She'll get into the wood, but they are. Uh, I don't know how they do it. I I would ruin it in like my first attempt. It's 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 really unbelievable what they do. So it's it's the paint coming up around the binding and then removing the whole that. the whole thing will be painted. Yeah. So she has to take the scrape the that. she has to scrape the paint off the entire binding. Okay. That's serious. Yeah. <laughs> In the, the case of the customs, obviously on both sides. Right. So here's here's one that she will do next. You can see. Okay. Marked. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. <laughs> So she hand scrapes this residual. Correct. Thank you. How are you? How are you doing? Anyway, okay. go, go check that out. A custom order. Yeah. Looks lucky. Right? <laughs> Randy? So what, are they, what hours do they run in production? Uh, we start at we start at six and there's two shifts, so I think we're done also by around six or seven. Yeah. And uh, this is final assembly, so all all the guitars come out of buffing that way. So from finishing, they go to buffing, and with buffing they will come in, mm -hmm. and here's where they, everything gets assembled. I'm awful. <laughs> how you doing? I just wanted to see a professional. How they doing? <laughs> Pretty much the same way I do. I'll go one post, come back, loop around, and then lift up, and that way it locks on the nut yeah, or yeah. locks on the string. Yeah. I just want to see how somebody else did it. Everybody does it different. Yeah. yeah. They do it even here. Yeah. Watch it again. So that is, I pull the tree taut, then I go about an inch and a half, or maybe one peg length, and then pull it back and wrap the first around the top. Okay, yeah. And then lift up. Yeah, that's all right. Cool. And what that does for me is that puts the excess on the outside, so I can just go clip them off all at once without having to get on the inside of the post. That's that is fantastic. kind of why I do it that way. Can we watch, can we watch you do the last one? You can. <laughs> Beautiful gold top. Yeah. Yeah, that thing is pretty. That's fantastic, man. Thank you so much. Excuse us. Thank you. What's up, man? How are you? What's that? Did you get that Pick up that Iomi? Yeah. Thank you. That looked amazing. Did you set it up? I did set up uh, Colin. Did. Colin. So here's what they're doing a little final sort of fretboard sanding. Okay. Uh, 
we have a we have a buffing wheel here, an extra one in case it comes out of buffing and it's it's after being worked, we need to buff something out or like you know as, as they manipulate it, as they worked on it yeah. before it gets cased. Okay. But yeah, I mean the final. She's she's uh, she's now finishing up uh, 57. Okay. Gold top. Yeah. But you can see everything at the end gets done all by hand and yeah. so that, that when it starts getting built and it goes all the way down to the final inspector it has to be a player yeah. to make sure that it's perfect and then it gets cased. Yeah, beautiful. That's a fine job. Yeah, right? He said, um, he said the last thing is it's got to go to someone who's a player to give us a final run. I said that'd be a, that'd be a great job, right? <laughs> So that's it. Cesar, thank you so much for giving us this tour. Mikey, you really see... Uh, it's wiring up there. <laughs> he's, he's, he's wiring up that one right there. Everything obviously is hand-wired. And... Yeah, yeah. I haven't... Obviously, I'll take them all at home. I wonder if it's just the 50s wiring in the Adam Custom, or do you know how they did the pickups, or the pots, or how they wired them, which vintage style, or... Oh, in, 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 your, in our job, Adam Jones? Jones? Yeah. It's exactly like everything was done in 79. And the, the, the pots, you'll see how they clean up. Yep. So that bench, somebody was, I heard someone picking away. That was the final kind of check, right? Yeah. Was that, that right over here? Yeah, these guys do the final, final test. There you get, are. You get the real fun job, huh? Yeah, I do. He gets to play everything. Nice to see you today. How you doing? How you doing, sir? Good. And then it goes out here, and then it goes to our warehouse. And that's off it goes, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's look at that. Oh, boy, Zach. I've seen the whole trip. Yeah, Zach's a lefty. And then we've got our photo booth here. Oh, wow. <laughs> so going forward, we're going to... We just finished building this because everything that we're going to be putting on our website will get photographed so that when you're you're buying a custom trip you are you actually you're buying the actual the one one that is photographed that's great and this is one of our uh, new anniversary 19, 1961 Les Pauls I just watched the Gibson have you plugged TV, it in uh, tried it already yeah. plug it in like. I just watched the Gibson TV on that nice to meet you thanks for letting us Test? <laughs> Beautiful guitar, yeah. Uh, but what he nice. does what he does is he goes through every fret, every string, yeah. plays everything, makes sure everything's yeah. perfectly playable, or nothing's buzzing. He checks the intonation, yeah. making sure all the things it's and then once that's done, then it yeah. gets cased. So sixty one this was the Les Paul, the design This is the first Les Paul. Les Paul, right? Which uh, at the time the advertisement was a solid hit. Oh wow! So it's on the. That's that's kind of cool. Yeah, and there's a there's a regular plate on the on the case, but we 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 do that. Um, when did it the, become just the SG then? 1964. 1964. Okay. Yeah, and, and a lot of people don't know that this is the reason why this is the reason why the control volume and tone knobs are here in an SG because when it was oh. designed, it was designed with the sideways wiggle stick. How interesting. Where you pull sideways. Pull this way. But when it's stored, it's that way. So this needed to fit. Interesting. And that's why the SG has the volume and tones here as opposed to being closer to like a Les Paul. Wow. If they hadn't done this, it probably would have been closer here, but then it's stuck. And so now this is the way the SG is. I had no idea. Can I, can I see how heavy it is? Yeah, sure thing. Oh, wow. 
This is like, to me, this is the perfect weight for an SG. Yeah, not, well, because it has this. Yeah, yeah. It's heavier. It's heavier because of this. But you can tell the guitar itself is not super heavy. You can feel it. No, yeah. no, no, it's, it's, it's lightweight mahogany, but this makes it yeah. heavier. Yeah, you really can't feel that extra weight down there, can you? What's that? Can I, can I try this little bar? Oh, I don't need to even plug it in. I just want to see how this little guy. This is wild, how it's sideways like that. Wow. <laughs> that, I've, never, I've never actually played one of those. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Excellent. Well, this is, this is too kind of you. Thank you for showing us around. Off they go. Off to the warehouse, and they're on their way. Thank you. Thank you again. Play and Trade Guitars is giving away this Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul to one of you. How to enter? Subscribe to Play and Trade Guitars on YouTube and we'll give it away when we hit 50,000 subscribers.